Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Ann Trujillo with the latest from Denver 7. In another city or state, a luxury high rise might be met with awe and excitement. Well, in our bustling and crowded Colorado, you're just as likely to experience exasperation and contempt. Such is the case for a new development in Denver Sloan's Lake. The 16 story building is set for 17th and Newton and developers say there will be some less pricey units for rent. Well, that plan inspired a neighbor to comment that the community will happily take the affordable housing, but developers can take their luxury apartments with them on their way out the door. Here's Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. Sloan's Lake might still have its quiet beauty and serene landscape, but it's also ground zero for yet another building boom as developers scramble to cash in on million dollar views. 500 new neighbors um, in one fell swoop on an area, a land, uh, you know, an area of land that's, you know, roughly two football fields. Skylar Caton lives at the corner of 16th and Mead and is one of the more outspoken opponents of a new 16 story luxury condo complex. It's the size and the scale of this thing. Um, that is causing people to take notice. But David Zucker with Zocalo Development says neighbors won't notice. Really what you see and what you experience on the street is townhome scale size. He says they've taken painstaking measures to move the 16 story high rise to the interior with smaller affordable housing at the street level. We agonize over the, the look of them and this is exactly the case. Th th these need to be great looking buildings. For all its haters, the project has as equally vocal supporters. Everybody's gonna be mad about more people coming in and, and you know density and the parking situations that come with that, uh, but like it's also part of living in a city. I think it's a great idea. There's Why? a lot of families that are moving into this area. People are constantly looking for places to live. All of this growth is, is, is great. The development will offer 155 for sale condos and an equal number, 155 affordable units for rent up to three bedrooms. If it doesn't pass, I think the losers are going to be those of moderate and lower incomes who love this city, but the city does not love them back. That was Russell Haythorn reporting. Meanwhile, Lakewood is so overwhelmed with growth, it's considering putting a cap on construction. In a week, residents will vote on question 200, and if passed, housing builds would be limited to 1% of the current homes in Lakewood. So what does that really mean? Well, as of 2017, for example, there were roughly 66,000 homes in Lakewood. So 1% of that, 667. So give or take a house or 20 with growth, and that's the total number of new units that could go up yearly. As you might imagine, realtors and contractors do not like this idea and they say it would bring business to a standstill. Locals we spoke with, however, think there's something to it. Take a <laughs> breath and, and, and let, let the development happen at a slower pace and let us react to it and grow with it instead of it just growing on top of us. Now, in addition to that cap, larger projects would also need a stamp of approval from city council. Ballots are due July 2nd. The two people killed in Sunday's horrific church bus crash outside of Pueblo have been identified. That bus was on its way back to New Mexico from a conference in Denver when the driver suffered a medical incident and veered into part of a bridge embankment on I-25. The driver, 22-year-old Anthony Padilla, was thrown from the bus and died from his injuries. Jason Marshall was also killed in the crash. He was a seminarian in training to become a priest. At least one of the 13 people injured remains in critical condition tonight. Police tell us they have cited another person and may take in more people in this now infamous Lakewood baseball brawl. And that brings the total to six people and includes the man in the teal shorts who became a focus of the investigation. He turned himself in this morning. Denver 7 has also confirmed that one of the original five people cited for disorderly conduct is a city of Denver employee. And the reason for all of this? A 13-year-old umpire made a call that upset one of the coaches. It's a good problem to have. Colorado's bison population is booming. We'll soon run out of space to roam. But as Denver 7's Sean Toll reports, researchers have a relocation plan that should benefit more than just the bison. Bison herds are well known to Colorado, but there's not as many as there used to be. Bison aren't endangered, but they're still a recovering species from uh, times when their numbers got quite low. And so we're really wanting to be able to contribute to the efforts to support bison conservation. 
So three and a half years ago, a group of conservationists from CSU had the idea to start their own herd on Soapstone Prairie Natural Area and Red Mountain. We started with 10 animals. So we had nine adult females and one bull calf that went out initially. Um, and today we have 76. The cap for the herd is 100. See if we can get these girls up over here. So they're almost to capacity already. The herd has grown more quickly than we expected. With more on the way. Hopefully six from this pen. <laughs> Jennifer Barfield is the lead on the effort and says she wasn't always sure this good problem would be the problem they faced. They've already given some bison away to other conservation groups and are prepared to do more. We have talked to several folks who are interested in acquiring animals from our herd. And so while we're not ready to make any of those partnerships public, we are working on those um, and we're continuing to get inquiries uh, even now. There are no plans to slow down despite the continuous growth. Our future goals for the herd is to continue supporting bison conservation in general. If it means giving groups of animals to other herds to support an existing herd or helping to potentially establish a new herd somewhere and help a true Colorado native flourish once more. That's our hope. In Fort Collins, Sean Toll, Denver 7. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you for joining us and check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Andrew Hill.